All right, guys, on number 22, given that the shape of the parallelogram solve for x, y, and z, well, we need to remember which angles are congruent and which angles are supplementary. So we can say that these two angles are congruent, these opposite angles, and these two angles that are are congruent in green. And the adjacent angles are supplementary, so we're going to start by solving for z. We can say that 2z plus z minus 15 equals 180. Now we could solve that by hand. But if we stuck it in insolve, we would determine that z equals 65. Now, how did we get that? We'll put a nit off to the side. We'll put insolve. For z equals 65. Okay. So how do we find the other variables? So if z is 65, well, to calculate this angle, we're going to have to do 2 times 65. What's 2 times 65? Well, it's 130. So that angle right here must be 130 degrees. So if these two angles are congruent, then x must also equal 130. So z equals 65. x equals 130. And we know if, these, if z is 65, to calculate this angle, we're just going to do 65 minus 15, which is 40. So this angle must be 40 degrees. And if this angle is 40, then this angle also must be equal to 40. Notice that if we add all these angles together, 130 plus 40 plus 40 plus 130, that would give us 360 degrees. <clears throat> Let's go on to 23. Given that the shape is a right trapezoid solve for x. So here we're going to use the mid-segment theorem for uh, trapezoids. We're going to call this base 1, base 2. And we're going to call this line our mid segment so to calculate our mid segment theorem says that the mid segment is equal to the sum of the bases b1 plus b2 divided by 2 well we know the top base is represented by an x, so we're going to write x. So we're going to say 20, which is our mid-segment, is equal to our base 1 is represented by an x. Base 2 is represented by a 34 divided by 2. So we'll take the time to solve this one by hand. Next, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. What's 20 times 2? Well, that's got to be 40. So we're going to have 40 equals x plus 34. Next, we're going to subtract 34 from each both sides. And if we subtract 34 here, this will cancel. And we'll be left with 6 is equal to x. All right, number 24, this shape is a, it says, given that the shape is a kite, solve for W and Z. Now, for a kite, it's important to remember which angles are congruent. So, we've got to remember that these two angles right here, guys, this angle and this angle, are going to be congruent. 
Now the top angle and the bottom angle are not congruent, but also that all the angles in any quadrilateral will sum to equal 360 degrees. So we can say that V plus 28 is equal to, we'll just indicate it as a different color, equals 140. So to solve for Z, we're going to start by subtracting 28 from each side. We'll be left with Z. 140 minus 28 is 112. So Z is 112. We calculated that. Very good. So if Z is 112, how do we count? What is Z minus 50? Well, we're going to do 112 minus 50. And what's that equal to? 112 minus 50? Well, that's going to be 62. So if Z minus 50 is this angle, then this angle must be 62 degrees. Now, how do we calculate W? Well, if Z is 112, to calculate this angle, we're going to have to do 112 plus 28. One twelve plus twenty eight is one forty. So that means this angle here is one hundred and forty degrees. Okay. So if that's one forty, that's one forty. We can calculate W. So we can say that W, what's indicated in green here, W is equal to three hundred and sixty. Minus all the other angles, 140 minus 140 minus 62. If we take the time to make that calculation, we'll determine that W is equal to 18 degrees. Very good. Let's go on to 25. 25, given that the shape is a rectangle, solve for W, X, Y, and Z. So we've got to remember that these four angles in a rectangle are all equal to 90 degrees. So if all these angles are 90, that's 90. This angle is 90. This angle is 90. This angle is 90. We can easily determine that X has to be 90. That's X. To solve for W, we just set 3W is equal to 90. If we divide by 3, W equals 90 divided by 3, which is 30. To calculate Y, well, well, let's start with V. If 9Z equals 90, Let's we'll indicate that one in green. If 9z equals 90, the solve for z, we simply divide both sides by 9 and determine that z is equal to 10. And finally, to calculate y, we can say that 5y plus 25. equal to 90. If we subtract 25 from each side, we'll be left with 5y is equal to 65. And if we divide both sides by 5, 65 divided by 5, we'll find that y is equal to 13. So we found that x equals 90, y equals 13, w equals 30, z equals 10. Again, we have to remember that each of these values, each of these values is equal to 90 degrees, each angle in a rectangle. 
So number 26, name the quadrilateral that satisfies all the following conditions. So if we review our properties of quadrilaterals here, which we'll get to use this reference paper on the test, it says diagonals are congruent. So diagonals are congruent, that applies to rectangles, so we can check that one off. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are parallel. That would apply to a parallelogram, or we could say opposite. Instead of parallel sides are parallel, we could say the opposite sides are parallel by definition. Opposite sides are congruent. That applies to a parallelogram, which a rectangle is a type of one. Diagonals bisect each other. So diagonals bisect each other. That would be a type of, let's see if we can scroll down a little bit here. Diagonals bisect each other, that's the property of a rhombus. So we can check off this one here, diagonals bisect each other, and finally the diagonals are perpendicular. We can put here, diagonals are perpendicular bisectors, right here. So that's got to be a rectangle, or a square. So let's go ahead and list rectangle or square here. Okay, let's go on to 26, well, we've done 26, so rectangular square would be our answer for 26, let's go to 27. On 27 it says solve for the area and perimeter of the following shape. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to say that, well, if this length is 7, and this length is 3, then the whole length of that side in total must be 10. So to find the perimeter, we're just going to say P equals 10 plus 8.1 plus 5. 10 plus 8.1 plus 5, that'll be 23.1. Next, we're going to use the Pythagorean Theorem to calculate the missing link. So, let's go ahead and draw us a little triangle here. Reproduce that little triangle. So, if the purple links, we don't know it, let's put an X there. We need the red part, the hypotenuse measures 5 units. The blue part measures 3 units. So to calculate x, what we're going to do, we can see that 3 to the second power plus x to the second power equals 5 to the second power. If we use in solve here, guys, we can determine that x is 4. So we know we calculated the height is 4. So, if we want to calculate the area of that triangle, we can see that area equals one half base times height. When the base is 10, the height is 4. So, A equals one half times 10 times 4. So, the area must be 20. Alright, on 28, we've got a regular polygon here. 
we better remember that our formula is area equals one half apothem times the perimeter. Well, how do we calculate the perimeter? Well, our perimeter is equal to seven times how many sides do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times six, which is equal to forty two centimeters. To calculate the area, our little apothem, our little a is five point seven eight. So to calculate the area, a equals one half times our apothem, which is this line right here, that segment, five point seven eight times forty two. If we type that in our calculator, we'll get Area equals 121.38 square centimeters. All right. On the 29, solve for the area and perimeter of the following shape. So in order to find the perimeter, we're just going to add up all the side lengths. Perimeter is equal to 8 plus 12 plus 8 plus 18. If we add those values together, we're going to get 46 centimeters. Okay, now to calculate the area, of a trapezoid, here's our formula. Area equals one half B1 plus B2 multiplied by the height. Well, what's our B1? It's 12. What's our B2? It's 18. What's our height? It's 7.4. So if you plug those values into our formula, a equals one half twelve plus eighteen times seven point four. Therefore, our area is equal to one hundred and eleven square centimeters. Now, number thirty. Let's draw a line here just to separate these two. Okay, what is the area of the unshaded part of the rectangle below? So, let's imagine we have a couple of things, guys. Let's actually visualize this. So, let's draw the big rectangle. The outer rectangle, let's just redraw that. So, if the long part, the length is 300, and the width is 150, we can calculate the area of that by simply multiplying 300 times 150. Well, what's 300 times 150? Well, that's going to, that would be 45,000. That would be in square feet. But what about this rectangle here? So this is 100 feet. Let's go ahead and outline this one in red. So it's, it has congruence markings on it. So we must know that each of those lengths is 100 feet. So to calculate the area of that part, we would say that area equals 100 times 100. What's 100 times 100, you might ask? Well, 100 times 100 is 10,000. So the area of that part is 10,000. 
And to calculate the area of the triangle, let's go ahead and write this in purple. The area of that triangle, A equals one half times our base times our height, 120 times 150. which would be 9,000. So if the area of the purple triangle is 9,000, the area of the red square is 10,000. Let's just make that a little bit neater here. To calculate our total area, our total, our area, our area of the unshaded part, we would say area of the unshaded is equal to 45,000 minus 10,000 minus 9,000. So if we type that in our calculator, 45,000 minus 10,000 minus 9,000, we're going to get 26,000. So the area of the unshaded part is equal to 26,000 square feet. Okay. It says Eli is using a rectangular canvas for a school art project. The shaded triangles represent the sections Eli will paint. What is the total area of the sections that Eli will paint? So he's only going to paint these shaded parts here. So how do we calculate that? Well, We know if the total is 8, this length right here must also be 4 centimeters. The heights are going to be the same, which is 6 meter, centimeters. So if we want to find the area of each triangle, let's divide it up into left triangle and right triangle. Left triangle and right triangle. on the right side. Let's just go ahead and color code our triangle. We've got this triangle on the right here, and we've got a triangle on the left. And we're going to add them together. So on the left, we're going to do one half times base times height for our area. One half times six times four, so the area has got to be twelve. Over here, same kind of thing actually. One half times six times four. Six times four is twenty-four. Half of twenty-four is twelve. So your area on the right is tw is twelve also. To calculate our total area, we're just going to add those together. Our total of both triangles. It's equal to 12 plus 12, which is equal to 24 square centimeters. Very good. Let's take a 32. The dimensions of three connected stores are shown below. How many square feet of floor space are used by the three stores? So. We need to notice that we have a few different rectangles going on. We've got a rectangle here. Let's go ahead and outline that rectangle in blue. 
we've got a rectangle going on here. And we've got a rectangle going on here. Okay. So, let's go ahead and label the dimensions. Well, if the total length is 243, to calculate the red part, we can do 243 minus 60. And that'll tell us the length up here is 183. So 183. What's our width going to be? <laughs> gonna be? Well, they calculate our width. We're going to do 275 minus 128. And we're going to get 147. Oops, made a small arithmetic error there. there guys. That should be 275. That should be 215 minus 128. 215 minus 128. What is that? Well, that's got to be 87. So this dimension must be 87. And now we know already are given the dimensions of the green rectangle, so let's go ahead and divide it up. Blue Red and Green. So let's go ahead we can actually go ahead and number these two since these are going to be printed in black and white. I'll say we have three rectangles. One, two, and three. Let's just go ahead and label this one. One, rectangle two, rectangle three. All right. So to calculate the area of the first rectangle, we're going to multiply 275 times 60. Now, once 275 times 60, well, that's got to be 16,500. Now, to calculate the area of the red rectangle, we're going to do 183 times 87. Let's make those big dots to indicate multiplication. We're going to get 15,921. And for the green rectangle, we're going to do 128 times 75, which will equal to 9,600. So to find our total, if we add them all up, total is equal to 16.5 plus 15.921. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Our total is equal to 16.500. Plus 15,921 plus 9,600. Add all these up together. We're going to get 42,021 square feet. So our total is equal to 42,000, I should say. 21 square feet. The total area of all of those stores put together.